So as we're walking, a little bit about ND filters, I thought you'd want to know. So um, apologies if you, if you know all about them, but um, uh, basically, in a, in a nutshell, it's sunglasses for the camera. It gives you the ability to um, slow down the shutter speed um, and affect particularly things like uh, movement of people, movement of water, um, uh, and it does that by letting less light into the camera and then allowing the camera to be on a slower shutter speed for a longer period of time. It needs to be done on a tripod and there are different stops of ND filter. I find uh, most of the time using a variable ND a bit of a waste of time. Um, the, the quality is not quite there. It's really important that the glass that you're photographing with, bearing in mind you've got a pretty uh, fancy camera behind it, you want the glass to, to go with that. So it's really, really important, and that's part of today, is, um, is thinking, you know, is this good enough uh, for my camera and what I'm demanding of it? So I'm using a um, 46 megapixel uh, Z7 with a 24 to 200 lens. Um, I'm going to be shooting predominantly in a kind of, kind of f6 um, to kind of f11 to get those images as sharp as possible. And um, so there are different stops of ND filter. Um, so the different stops are used for varying, um, uh, for varying techniques. I find most of the time when I'm working, I've used three stops. Uh, I've added on extra stops with, um, with a polarizing filter. Po polarizing filter gives about two stops. And I've used six, six stops. Uh, I've also used 15, but overall, the one for me, the real kind of sweet spot is the 10 stop filter. And yeah, I've done quite a few other videos about this that I will um, I'll put up in a link um, above. And uh, there's, uh, there's two or three that I'll, I'll put up on the link above. And I just love using the 10 stop. It's that sweet spot between not having too long an exposure. So to not risk um, uh, the tripod getting knocked and having enough exposure to really extend the time to create really, really kind of milky, still interesting seas, almost ghostly. Um, I'll put up a couple of photographs of uh, examples that I'm talking about so you can see what you can do with the 10-stop filter. So this is an image I took in Lake Canary. And you can see the colours both in the water and in the sky are quite naturalistic. This is the same day. Um, this is from a film that I made that I can put up in a link in the description above. It was about using a 10-stop filter in mountain environments. And again, you can see that the colours are really true using the Lee filter. The infrared is well balanced. This is Barthampton Meadows. This was a panel of seven different shots. So you really need to be able to have an accuracy with the ND filter when you're using a panel so that you can stitch them together. You don't want any vignetting or anything like that. This is Paulot Weir. Now these colours is absolutely essential that the ND did a good job of representing those colours. And this is pretty much straight out of straight out of camera with my um, Lee 10 stopper. This is Speaker Mill in North Devon. And again, I was trying to get that water as crystal clear as I could and get some cloud movement in there again, whilst keeping all that clarity and all that information in the foreground. And lastly, Pretty Mill. So again, the sky was really important in this one. If you have too much, um, uh, if it doesn't block out the infrared enough, you get a magenta cast, and then you get those oranges and yellows creeping into the shot that are really unwanted in a shot like this. So this one is really important because there's another aspect uh, and that is colour cast. So colour cast is the colour that comes from using the filter. So with Lee filters it's typically um, slightly blue. Uh, some people say it's even slightly purple. Now 
If the colours are affected a small amount, that's okay. But if there are colours affected really, really badly, it becomes more and more... Oh, I've got a bit of a river on my hand. Um, <laughs> um, right, wait a minute. Wait a minute, just going to uh, negotiate this one. Whoop. Whoop. Hey, yep. And another one. <laughs> um, oh God, there's a much bigger one here. Oh dear. Might not be able to walk over that one. Um, right, sorry, I'm getting distracted. Um, the colour of the filter, um, it's really important because you can correct most in post. But if it's a bright purple colour from some of the cheaper filters, it can be a real issue and it can wreck your photography unless you're doing it in black and white. And it's really important to me because most of my photography is colour and most of my um, 10 stop work is, is definitely in colour. When I'm using blue hour, things like that, I really want to get and communicate the right types of, um, of, of colour. So it's the amount of stops it gives me so I'm still negotiating lots of streams. <laughs> um, it's, the, it's, the, uh, it's the amount of uh, stops it gives me. It's the, it's the usability of it. This is a screw-on filter, so it should be quicker, definitely going to be lighter, um, and hopefully it will seal the light well on the lens. Now, sealing the light well on the lens is really important as well. I'll just come over here and we'll uh, try and walk up this side. <laughs> try and get away from this. There's far too much water here. Um, sealing the light well is very important, otherwise you get otherwise you get kind of light bleed and you basically wreck your photograph. So those are the main things. How it can handle the stops, do the, is it a true 10 stop filter? What's the colour cast on it? Um, does it affect the sharpness of the shot? And am I going to get everything that I need and want for the 28 pounds or so that I paid for it. Well, let's find out. So here is the filter. Now, before I put this on, something really, really important that you need to do. So however you want to do it, okay, um, first things first, um, I've, I'll go into more detail, um, I've been into more detail about this in other films and I'll put those more detailed films and a link up in the description above. Um, but for now, what I'm going to do now is this. Um, first of all, I'm just on aperture priority and I'm just taking a reading. So for the exposure I want, um, it's roughly, I don't know if you can see this because it's very sunny, but I've got um, 160th of a second at f11 on ISO 64. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go into the um, focus modes and I'm just going to select manual focus. So manual focus is now on. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this um, AFN button that I've set up as a zoom to manually focus my shot. So what I'm looking for is I'm looking for fo focus peaking and I'm looking for my shot to be as spot on as I can possibly make it. Now, it's quite difficult to see in this weather, but that's looking good. Okay, so I'm going to take that off again. Okay, um, so I framed my shot. So the next thing I need to do, I've looked up uh, what this needs. So it needs um, for um, for 160th of a second, we're looking at a 15 second long exposure. So I'm just going to screw this on here. It's a lot less hassle than using Lee filters. Um, and then I'm going to come back around here and this time I'm going to switch it to manual. So it's manual focus um, and, uh, and everything is, uh, and all the settings are on manual. So this time what I'm going to do, um, the beauty of mirrorless is it shows you uh, what the exposure is going to look like before you've even taken it. Um, but I'm going to go for 15 seconds, like the Big Stopper app said. Okay, I'm going to just go for a two-second timer. 
um, just so I don't get any blurring in the camera and then I'm going to take the shot. So this is my first shot. Um, I'm feeling that there's a lot of um, orange and yellow coming into the shot. There's quite a magenta cast and it's, it's creating a problem in the sky um, and in the foreground. Now this is straight out of camera, it isn't edited. And you can find that you can take the temperature down, but as you do that, getting accurate colours can be quite difficult. I think there's too much infrared being let into the shot and not being filtered out. Okay, I'm set up for my third shot of the day. And what an incredible day it is. Look at this amazing weather. Amazing reflective space. It's so glorious. So again, I'm using this um, gobe filter so far. I'm really, really impressed. Um, so here we go. Uh, so um, first of all, I um, so I've used focus peaking. Um, I've got it on I, again. I need to kind of work out the exposure time. And um, the big stopper app said um, uh, 13 seconds, but I think probably. I've just taken a 13 second exposure and I think, I think um, 10 is going to be better. So again, just uh, change it to two second timer, take the shot and away you go. Now, these kind of shots, if you're using a travel tripod or a smaller tripod, it's really, really important to um, go lower, go wider and don't use the center column at all because the more vibration you get out of these shots, the less likely you, that you are to, to end up with a, with a shot that's completely in focus. So, um, just walking over to, um, to get the, um, the sea on the rocks. Um, when, I, uh, when I go over there, I wanted to um, find a place to compare this Gobe 10 stop filter um, to my uh, Lee 10 stop filter. Now, bearing in mind here, uh, the price of the two is completely different. Um, if you were to buy a screw in Lee 10 stop filter, which is the equivalent to mine, but mine's in a kit form, um, it'd be about 180 quid. And this Gobe, this Gobe 10 stop filter is about 28. So, there's a big difference in money between the two. And I'm just wondering if the Gobe one can handle it or not. We'll soon see. When we've, got, we've got fast moving sea, longer exposures, and see um, if it can handle it, if the color cast is all over the place and if the quality is not quite there. For now, let's just take in this wonderful view. Okay, so here we go. So we've got a bit closer to the sea now, so if you can just about see. Um, so I've got my, got my tripod here and I'm just focusing on this area here with the sea in the background. It's a beautiful rock pool. So again, I'm um, just concentrating on trying to get the right exposure. Also trying to get my focus peaking in. I don't know if you can just about see this, it's probably too uh, bright out here, but there's focus peaking. Um, lines throughout this, especially in the rock formation here. So um, it's f11, it's a sixth of a second this time, um, and um, I'm going to take a shot. So two second timer again, just so you don't get any um, uh, any any shake at all. And let's take that shot. Okay, so now I've set up this Lee system. So you can see here. Um, there's a, um, a filter on the lens here, and basically this lens 
Um, so you've got the adapter ring here. Um, don't know if you know Lee, but you've got an adapter ring. Then you've got the filter holder. Then you've got the filter itself in there. So it's a bit more of a faff, but obviously it is a tried and tested thing. And it is, um, it's a fantastic filter, this. It's the filter I've used for many, many years. So I'm gonna use exactly the same settings. So I'm gonna um, do two second timer um, using uh, six whole seconds again to take the first shot, just to, just to expose for the ground. And then um, I'm gonna take that down and expose for the sky because that sky is too overexposed. Okay, so here is uh, one other comparison here. So um, I've, got my, uh, I've got my camera here set up and um, I've just taken a shot with the Lee filters. And again, uh, what I'm gonna do is pretty much take the same shot um, with, the, uh, with, the, with the Gobe filter and see if there's a difference and what difference that is. So this is the first set of shots that you can see. So on the left, with the white line around it, is the Lee filter. And on the right is the Gobe filter. Um, you can see really big differences in this shot. So for instance, around this area here, around the kind of sand area, um, you can see that in this Lee filter, you can see that the lighting is really quite kind of smooth and sensitive around here. There's also some additional reflection being picked up on here and on the edge of the puddle here. This creates contrast against the rock here. And it also um, it helps to kind of add a sense of structure to the foreground. Unfortunately, in the gobe filter, it's not only very orange in the sand, this isn't the correct color of the sand really at all. Um, we also don't have any of those reflected elements that make it a more interesting photograph. So this whole area here, around here, um, isn't taken into account. The light on the sand is very different as well. And the sky is also taken on a slightly strange tone here. Um, it seems to have not dealt with the um, uh, with with the sun very well, so it's slightly bleached out on the corner here. So in order to correct this, you'd need to color correct it and do some linear gradients in order to put this back to where it needs to be. But there are other problems as well. The sky has gone brown here, which is a bit of an issue. If we look over to the Lee filters, yep, yeah, it's got a bit of a yellow car. I'm um, sorry, a bit of a blue cast to it, definitely but there's a big difference in these clouds here. So onto the next image. So this is the image that I took down low. We can see again, we've got issues with the reflection. So here we've got an area reflecting the sky really nicely. Um, and uh, the, the, the reflection actually isn't quite so good here than it is, isn't in the gobe filter. But this sky reflection, which I find really important to get contrast, just isn't there in the gobe filter. You can't do much about that in editing. The other thing that you can see is that this whole area has gone very, very orange. This is a sign of a magenta cast. Um, and again, we'd need to do quite a lot of color correction. The cloud has got this kind of, um, kind of browny, um, yellowy feel to it as well and the sky isn't quite such an intense blue. So you'd need to do quite a lot of work. But this isn't the main point. The main point is this. The purpose of this image here is to focus on the rock here and then the contrast between the water reflection here and here and the surrounding area. If you look here in the center, there just is no quality in, in water reflection at all. Now, this could be due to a couple of things. It could be due to um, it not filtering out the infrared properly. It could also be due to the fact that it may not be a true 10 stop filter, and it may be something like an eight stop filter, and there's too much light being let in. The exposure is actually better on this side of the rock here than you can see here. Here it's a bit dull, but again, this can be picked out quite easily in post, um, brushing on extra exposure and light them. So unfortunately, after wanting to be really enthusiastic about this filter, 
I think it's really beautifully designed. I think the case is great. The price is brilliant. But I'm looking for something that is really reliable, that even if it doesn't give true color, it filters out a lot of the infrared. It allows you to go really, really slow with your shutter speed, especially doing waterfall work or moving water work. And unfortunately, I feel like, sadly, it's hard for me to recommend the Gobe filter because of these things. If you're prepared to pay the money, so you pay your 28 quid, and you're prepared to do lots of post-production for every single image you do using this, then go for it. But you've got to be aware that um, with water reflections and with, um, uh, with, with the contrast, it won't be quite right. So you'll need to use some gradient filters. You'll need to adapt the colors and light them quite a bit. So I hope you found this video useful. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.